package came in the mail today. I do wonder what it could contain. Let's find out, shall we? And here it is, the big reveal. So, Larry Musical Company has sent me a trumpet. The funny thing is, I genuinely don't remember which finish I got this in, so this is going to be a fun surprise for me as well as you. And, here comes the money shot. Uh, almost. What is this stuff? Alright, here we go. This is actually a drawstring bag containing... Oh, there she is. A silver-plated trumpet from Glary Musical Company. So here we see the full outfit. We've got the trumpet, we've got the cleaning cloth, we've got the typical white gloves. We have the mouthpiece, which came in this box over here. And overall, first impressions, the valves actually work out of the box, which cannot be said for even some more expensive instruments than this. Slides move. And overall, I'm excited to give this thing a playtest. All right, it is now the next day, and today I'm going to playtest the Glary brand trumpet for the first time. But first, I'd like to oil the pistons using my preferred formula. You can check out a video in the card up there about how that's done. And in the meantime, I'll take a look at the pistons and make sure there is no damage. Here is the first piston. You can see it's got some uh, generic Monel-like coating on it, which is good. It doesn't look too worn or pitted or anything. Ports look clean. Spring works fine. Nothing too bad to speak of. This is the front of the valve. I'm not sure whether this is meant to be a one or just a marking in the metal, but there you have it. This is the second piston, which unlike number one, has a very clear two on there. Same sort of deal. The plating looks good, the ports look good, everything looks fine. And now the third piston. This one, the three, seems to have sort of given up midway down, but I can tell that it's supposed to be a three. Again, plating looks good. Nothing too bad on the inside of the ports, so it looks like all three valves are pretty usable out of the box. I did say the valves worked right out of the box, but of course that's nothing compared to when they actually have oil on them. The valves are now pleasantly springy and fast, no matter which angle you push them down from. I had a couple little issues with the first valve not coming all the way back up without oil, but with oil, it is now perfectly fine. So next up, we're gonna lubricate all the slides with some space filler. This is the instrument's main tuning slide, and I have to say I'm really impressed by the quality on these inner slide tubes. There aren't any manufacturing defects or any residue that's been left over from the process, so the slides are very smooth and they've been buffed down to a nice finish. It's the same general story with the first valve tuning slide. It didn't feel scratchy or gritty coming out, but we do want it to move a little faster, so we're going to oil it real quick. The second valve slide was a little bit of a struggle to get out, and I thought I'd also point out this interesting dual finish they've got going on there. It looks like the silver plating has extended onto the slide tubes a little bit. Not that it'll ever be particularly visible because I never have my second slide out, but that is a feature nonetheless. And finally, valve slide number three. Same story as the rest of them, nice and smooth here, nothing scratchy or gritty. It was even pretty fast out of the box, but I think we can do a little bit better. If any part of this process sounds new or unfamiliar to you, don't worry. The Glary Company stocks every trumpet with an owner's manual with maintenance instructions. Everything from where the parts are on the instrument to how to clean each part and keep the instrument in tip-top shape is included. And with that, our Glary trumpet is all ready to go. Let's play test this thing. We're now on our way to the campus practice room to give this Glary trumpet a try. The case came with backpack straps, so I've got a nice over-the-shoulder bag for the long walk. I'll let you know when we get there. So here we are at the practice room. Besides the mouthpiece that this one came with, I've also brought two more in here. One of them being the Megatone 1.5A that I use for most of my playing, and the other being this also Chinese-made gold-plated one, which I think would look really nice on the silver trumpet. First ever notes on the Clary Brass trumpet. First we got this stock mouthpiece. some flow studies to test the connectivity of this instrument. Ooh, 
little bit of etude practice in the meantime. Several weeks have now elapsed since the previous segment of the video, during which I've done a number of things, including getting a haircut, starting my second year of college, and playing my new Clary trumpet. While I am thoroughly impressed by the overall package and the outstanding value of what a Clary trumpet costs, I am going to be keeping this review as honest and objective as possible, which means highlighting the good, the bad, and the ugly. Bear in mind that the Glary is what is known as a stencil horn, a factory instrument produced en masse for a slew of international remarketers. Glary Musical Company's job is then to quality test and modify these instruments they receive before selling them to you. Even so, there can still be variation between these horns, so please remember that your mileage may vary. 
Firstly, from the standpoint of ergonomics, I want to point out that the Glary Trumpet is a little bit inconvenient for my size of hands. The thumb hook is soldered quite far from the valve casing, making it hard for me to adjust the pitch with my left thumb. And on the other end of things, I feel that the clamp keeping the third valve saddle in place is actually soldered too close to the valve casing, causing my fingers to cramp after long periods. This can be alleviated by altering my grip slightly and placing my pinky under the third slide, as I sometimes naturally do on other instruments, but nonetheless, I would rather have the clamp soldered further out to accommodate the conventional grip. This is a fairly granular point to be so negative about at the start of my review, but the holding sensation contributes to a player's first impression of an instrument, so I thought I'd get that out of my system first. Glary's valves are typical of a student model horn in that their springs are on the lighter side. This allows for a more springy sensation while pressing the valves without too much tension, good for beginners or students with less finger strength. The drawback to lighter springs is that the valves are more prone to sluggishness. If not cared for properly, the first and third valves develop a slight play in their action, sometimes slowing down in the middle of being pressed. However, as mentioned, it's something of a miracle for any instrument traveling overseas to have working valves directly out of the box with no cleaning or oiling, as did the Glary trumpet. In the event that these valves do not suit a player's level of performance, the springs can easily be exchanged for a heavier set. One feature of some Chinese horns, and indeed this one here, that I particularly like is the water key stoppers. These appear to be a unique silicone compound of some sort that provides a good balance of longevity and effectiveness. For instance, I've owned my Chinese-made unbranded DE flat trumpet for over five years, and its silicone inserts have seen remarkably little wear, still retaining their original squishiness. Older horns will tend to use corks, which degrade heavily over a similar period of time, and my Yamaha, my main instrument, which is now just under six years in my possession, uses neoprene stoppers, which are durable but have hardened substantially. The Glary silicone stoppers, meanwhile, are both malleable and unlikely to degrade for years. While that may seem like a small thing to talk about, it's really necessary that you your water key stoppers fit tightly and don't degrade so that your instrument doesn't play with any leaks. Now, as most of you are probably anticipating, I'd like to address my playing experiences with this trumpet. I've put the instrument through its paces with excerpts from a variety of genres and styles, so feel free to revisit those at any point if you'd like. I find this horn to have a surprisingly dark sound overall. This is very much unlike other Chinese instruments I've played, which almost unfailingly have a bright, brassy, and sometimes tinny sound. See for instance the DE flat trumpet I referenced earlier. There isn't an objective answer as to whether a dark sound is better or more desirable, as the answer will vary greatly from one player to the next. However, I'm impressed by the sound quality of the Glary because it managed to avoid falling into the shrill or tinny category, which is a feat that can't be said for many mass-produced trumpets. Its lower register can admittedly be subject to a certain growliness at high volumes, but the trumpet still maintains a surprising breadth of sound at fortissimo, not becoming too buzzy sounding like some student models. I'm still inclined, however, to say that this instrument performs best at a whisper, though, because I was most impressed by its soft ballad-like quality. A less than favorable attribute of some darker sounding horns is a lack of responsiveness to the player, which can be exacerbated by an instrument built on a budget. I have high expectations for responsiveness. As someone who's played a Yamaha 8310Z for years, the Yamaha is extremely receptive of the player's inputs and rewards the player with a wide tonal palette and range of style. In that sense, I'm a little bit spoiled when I say that the Glary doesn't have the same instantaneous response, but in all fairness, it does as well as any typical student or intermediate model. and even as well as some higher-end trumpets, which shall remain unnamed. It's versatile and doesn't feel too stuffy to play on. So, despite my lofty standards, I'd say the Glary trumpet doesn't have any intolerable response issues. A little stuffiness in the register above high D, similar to my Yamaha 2335 student model that I started on, is characteristic of student horns with a good sound quality, such as generally the trade-off on student models, but the upper register does slot very nicely, with no alternate fingerings needed. Even some brighter and more responsive horns with slightly easier high notes, including my state-of-the-art Yamaha 8310Z, can be much fussier about conventional fingerings and not wanting to work. Additionally, one aspect of playing to which the Glary trumpet is surprisingly responsive, almost too much so, is pitch bends and shakes. In fact, the player should be careful to maintain a consistent airstream and embouchure setting throughout their playing as small adjustments can lead to notes being bent out of the slot. You can hear this especially in the etude and flow study clips I played earlier on in the video. Perhaps this is just more evidence that the horn wants to play ballads. I mean, if I'm honest, I wouldn't mind taking this horn to a recording session with a jazz combo. Its buttery sound, softer dynamics, and ease of bending could make it a pretty remarkable choice for the money. As my word count in this segment starts to exceed a thousand, I think now is as good a time as any to call it a wrap on this Glary Trumpet review. For its price tag of only $100 brand new shipped to your door, the Glary is a great starter instrument that won't sound too screechy in the hands of a beginner thanks to its darkness, an excellent looking spare horn for marching or pet band with its forgiveness in the higher register and solid sound of fortissimo being a good plus, 
or a surprisingly viable option for the developing studio musician who's looking for a slightly darker sound. Over the years, I've played quite a number of Chinese stencil trumpets, and the Glary has managed to impress me in a wide variety of areas, including some of the usual weakest spots of other horns like it. Particularly with a nice mouthpiece from a reputable maker, this horn is a great choice for the money and can really sing in the right hands. If you'd like to look into purchasing yourself or your child or student a brand new Glary trumpet, you can visit the link at the top of the video description or enter glarymusic.com in your URL bar. I'd like to take a moment to sincerely thank Larry Musical Company for sending me this horn to play and discuss on my channel. Their customer service rep was very friendly and easy to work with, always receptive of my questions, and their shipping was, suffice it to say, much more punctual than my review. I'd also like to thank those of you who have stuck around diligently through my rambling. It truly means a lot to me. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. I've got plenty more content like this on the way. If you want to hear another perspective on the Glary Trumpet, then check out this review by Igor Fedorov of Trumpet Gains. Anyway, that will be all from me today. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.